Uh, hello, my name is Karishma Shah. I am a PhD student, a part of Indust uh, European Industrial Doctorate program, working with Project Interface. Today, I have with me Pablo Dominguez, and we are going to talk about sustainability and biocatalysis. Hi, Pablo. Greetings from Graz. Hi, Karishma. Hello. Before, Good morning. Before we start, uh, could you please briefly introduce yourself and the company? Yes, uh, I'm Pablo Dominguez. Uh, I have the background in chemistry and in, in biocatalysis and in biotechnology. And since the last uh, 10 years, I have been running my, my own consultancy firm where I give uh, support in technical things related to green chemistry and sustainability. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's begin with the interview. My first question is, why is sustainability of interest and importance to your company? Well, since the, since I run the company, I have started to work in green chemistry processes. So, so I give kind of support in technical means uh, to processes to make to chemical processes and try how to make them more green and, and sustainable. So then uh, the, the, the sustainability is at the core of my company. And uh, we always care that uh, when we assess a reaction, we can get the two things. We can be economically feasible and also uh, sustainable at the same time. So we are always working on projects that are related to the, the circular economy and to green chemistry. And uh, what does your company do for the development of circular bioeconomy? Um, as I said, I mean, for us, it's important to, to work in sustainability in the sense that uh, we believe that this is here to, to uh, uh, stay. I mean, it's part of the present, but it will be also part of the future. We don't, don't think that, that there will be a future in which we will we'll go back to a kind of business in which people don't care on sustainability. Everything, every segment in life at this moment is uh, related to how to make things in a sustainable way. And uh, yeah, we are happy to, to, to give a tiny contribution to these things with our work. This, and this is why for us it's very important to 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 put the green chemistry and sustainability at the center of the of the work that we do the consultancy. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting. What is the role of the company in the project interfaces? Well, I have been working in transversal way in the action in the sense that I give support in cost supervision of projects and also in the in the uh, exploitation and dissemination of the activities that are being done in the interfaces. So the first role is try to spot uh, on time all the innovations that can come from the action and then try to be sure that they are uh, are protected via IP before we get them uh, disseminated. And then uh, we also care to be in contact with the stakeholders and try to foster a bit how the, the research is being done in the action. And um, furthermore, I mean, I have been giving support in, in reactions and co-supervision in biocatalysis for many years. And then uh, I'm also involved in, in training of the, of the ESR with some courses and uh, workshops. And uh, I, I'm also a mentor of some of you, among them, you too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, what are uh, some of the common and usual industrial challenges in the field of biocatalysis? You mean the, the challenges to, to set up a, a process in biocatalysis? Okay. Mm, yeah, I think this is a very broad question and the very difficult to answer. First of all, I think from an industrial viewpoint, the most important thing is try to find a, a case, a, a molecule, a target that then you can you can try to get it with a, a enzymatic means. And one, once that you have that, uh, you need to find a, a, a substrate, a raw material that can be available in, in a good price, a competitive price, or that you can make in-house from things that are available. Ideally, you should get a, a substrate from the biogenic uh, resources, but this is not always the case. And industrial cases, if they are in a hurry to put the product in the market, you have also to realize that the 
timing is not the the same for for people. And then you have to find uh, an enzyme that can do this this transformation. Once you have this, uh, it's very rare that you have a wild type that can work on that. So probably you need to to make some kind of series of uh, evolution to have a better variant for this. And then you have to think a little bit um, which are the media, the solvent, the, the water that you are going to use, how how you can find ways to to, to make this economically feasible. At this point, it's also recommended to start to look at the greenness of the of the reaction and how to address the sustainability. And once that you have all this back, probably you can think in, in a, a scale it up and trying to show that it's possible to make kilo scale this of this molecule. Meanwhile, you might have a challenge that this molecule is not uh, important anymore in terms of uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, importance or something. But if uh, still, when you have the, develop this, you still have a business case with this molecule, you then will be probably in good, uh, in good place to try to, to, to enter the, back, the, the market with your process. That was interesting, totally. And I could totally relate with your answer in terms of when trying to get a process here as well with the project, it becomes all these aspects that you have to take into consideration, but not in an industrial fashion completely, but as we discussed as well, that, you know, this is something that you need to take care of. Of course, of course. And I think, I mean, the, in, in uh, an action like uh, the interfaces, this is, I think, very important also, even if it's an academic project, because it's also an industrially oriented project. And, most of you, from the things that I have heard, you 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 want to go on in, in industrial path, and for us, it's all, for us as a, the, the supervisors, as the mentors of this program, we are interested that you get the uh, skills. That the first day you, you you enter an industry, you are not new to the things that are being said there, to the jargon, to the ideas or the philosophy in which industries work. So it's also important. This kind of thinking also is important in the academic field for sure. I would say definitely this program is very much recommended for the people who want to see a research perspective through, through industrial class. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, to the next question, what are the crucial steps in developing a sustainable biofatality process? Well, I think this is a bit uh, what we said before. I mean, this is the, the, the identification of a molecule and then going to, to, to the entire path to take this uh, this to the market. I think people have a, a made a challenge here in industrial cases for the last year, which is the, the long time to market that you usually need in biocatalysis because the, the evolution round used, used to take quite a lot of time to find a good variant and then try to develop also these kind of things have uh, have uh, tampered with the use of biocatalysis. Um, probably the path is this one, where I I see it maybe some kind of issues is that uh, you still meet many people that are reluctant to use enzymes, or they are not uh, aware of the of the, the potential of enzymes in industrial uh, environments. And then um, I think here. Education should be a very important point to put forefront to try to train people more in, in biocatalysis and make people uh, aware how the how enzymes can can work in industrial means. And then the the steps are clear. Then uh, first, in my opinion, is a target. I mean, if you don't have the molecule to do, you cannot do anything. And then once you have this. It's a question to look for the right enzyme, right system, and try to work on that to try to get it. Done at the end. Process itself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last question: What are the three important points that uh, biocatalysis researchers need to know about intellectual property rights? We had a lot of sessions with this in the program itself with you, but a brief would be really good for all the viewers. Yes, I I think that this is a very important topic in the sense that this not typically taught in universities or in programs. And the first thing that I want to say is that uh, when you are doing a PhD, when you are doing research, and this is something that I also say in seminars, you, you are developing new things. And if you are developing new things, it's, uh, it's common or it's uh, likely that you will find uh, innovation here or there. And you have to know how to 
recognize this innovation and to know when you can have the chance to make it a, a protection of the things that you are doing, okay? which is the IP, is the intellectual property. So the, what I try to put in, in seminars, I, I try to teach this from, from the basis and in a very uh, simple way, we could say, and it's uh, addressing the three main questions that you have to answer when you want to go for a patent. First one is the whether the things that you are doing are novel, so you have to look in the literature and have a bit of an idea on how this is uh, this is going wrong. If it's unprecedented, not reported in in publications, in papers, and so on. The second step is uh, if you are being inventive, and this is probably the the most uh, difficult path to to go on because you can do a thing that is novel but is not inventive. You can make a, a reaction with a new enzyme. The combination of this new enzyme with the reaction is novel, but the reaction is known, and the kind of enzyme is known, so you are not inventive in this case. So identification on how to bypass inventive step is probably the most uh, difficult part here. And then the, the third question is if you if you are solving an industrial problem, which of course in catalysis, usually this is the case since you, you are working on a reaction that, that are doing things for that. Um, so on balance, the three questions is, uh, are you novel? Are you inventive? Are you solving a problem? Th those are the three things that you need to, uh, to address in, in, in the IP when, when you are looking for that. And I think that this is the kind of learning that probably everyone at the PhD level would learn if they are given this kind of seminar, which is not that uh, lengthy in time. And uh, I think this is helpful for people, for, for minds to think a bit, okay, what, what, what I'm doing, I'm going to check if this is novel. I'm going to check how to, how I can be inventive combining things and so on. And they probably you can have better cards for your future. Yeah. I, I think it was really helpful to know this, uh, from the first hand when you start to think like, uh, industrial researcher would be necessary because I think more more industries approach with the uh, IPs rather than research papers, right? Yes. I mean, the first, uh, the first uh, aim in industry is to earn money, make profit, and then this is probably based on uh, make a, a, a process that can compete in terms of uh, cost in the market. And that could be a way of a competitor. So the best way to do this is, of course, uh, getting a patent for that. The reality is a little bit more complex because it's very difficult to get a strong patent or, or on something. So then you probably need to think about also uh, looking for the FTO conditions, freedom to operate conditions to try to work on, on these cases and so on. So writing papers is not at the, at the top not. of the list of the things to be done in industry. Now, having said that, um, many companies or many researchers that are working in industries write papers on their work and also reviews and so on. And I think this is also a very important line to, of working in the sense that they are uh, contributing to the, to the community with a, a kind of papers that are probably not uh, considered from the academic world. If you write a paper on the, how to uh, establish in the setup of a new reaction or something, mm -hmm. probably this is something that not many academic groups are uh, thinking of. Mm -hmm. And probably these kinds of papers can give you some hints on how to do your process better. If you're working in catalysis, if you're working in biocatalysis, you really need to have this end uh, vision at the end, saying, okay, it's true that I am now at the first step, identifying a new enzyme is still very early, very far from the from the industrial use. But the ultimate end or aim of this of this work is to try to show that an enzyme can do something for a market. So this is why I also value when you meet people at, at the at the industrial level that are still published, still are active in conferences, giving talks and so on, because I think this is also part of the community. You know, it's, anyways, scientific communication is very much necessary in the form that we have research papers or intellectual property, right? I agree with you totally because this yeah. gives us information to proceed with respect to the people who have already done something and then we can use this knowledge to build up upon. So, yeah. yeah. And I think for you at uh, interfaces, one thing that I 
have a feeling that you have learned while well, I think it's important is that you know now how 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 to speak the two languages, the mm -hmm. language of the academic world, but also the, the industrial language. And that's a very important uh, a, a, a skill that you have got here in the in, in the action in the sense that now when you are talking to people or where you when you are doing a project, you realize to where it is is going, to whom is this in, intended and so on, and then you probably can can easily find the way to fine tune the projects in in the in the right way. So I think this is this is something that probably interfaces is one of the skills that you have got in this in these years. Even with the COVID, that of course it, it, it has been a big issue because many of the sessions of training were online, which of course are nice and are feasible, but are not the same that, that, than if, if you meet in person. But even with this, I, I'm, I'm happy with the, with the things that I see in you now that you are at the end of your, or, or of your thesis. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is completely true that the perspectives are so different that uh, when you go to an industry and approach and the questions that uh, your supervisor from your industry uh, poses you and versus the academic supervisor that poses you and how do you progress in terms of science in both levels. So I agree totally. Now, I totally understand that initially the period came in and the difference was not so clear because it was like it seems like to be the same PhD program but it is not PhD, like the same PhD okay. program everybody has it when it really justifies the name of European industrial doctorates. I think so. I think that this is uh, the, the, the idea is try to bridge a bit the gap in between uh, academic research and industrial uh, environments and try to train people already from the beginning to have these this thoughts in mind. Of course, you will start uh, working in industry and you will realize that, that you still will have to learn quite a lot of things. Every day I have to learn quite a lot of things. Uh, I believe that I am not better. I, I, I'm now a better uh, con consultant than when I was when we started interfaces too, because we all learn on the spot, on the job, new things and so on. But uh, if you already have the basis, this is going to be a big help for the beginning and to start grow in your career, for sure. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you and discussing on sustainability and biocatalysis. Uh, thank you for sharing insights in biocatalysis. Thank you for all viewing this interview. Thank you very much for all the things and all the best thank you. in the future.